Do you want Djokovic level flexibility? What's up athletes, you're here because you believe that you can max your potential on the tennis court with the law of success, learn, apply, and win. Today, we're gonna to be going over Djokovic's warmup, which includes some light cardio, dynamic stretches, and ballistic movements. Let's go. To start off, I wanna give credit where credit is due. The exercises and information from this video are from Djokovic's book, Serve to Win, some amazing articles I found on matspoint.com, the USTA, and lastly, observing Djokovic's warmups. I'll link to all of the original sources in the description below. Every warmup starts with 10 to 15 minutes of light jogging or biking. As an athlete, Djokovic is extremely careful not to do anything too intensely at this stage of the warmup because his body is still cool and he could easily pull a muscle. It's important to do everything as lightly as possible and gradually increase the intensity as you feel warmer. The purpose of this phase of the warm-up is to increase your heart and breathing rate, get your blood flowing to your muscles so that you can increase their temperature and activate your nervous system. If you can't commit to 10 minutes of jogging for every practice and match, you can alternatively use this five minute circuit to get your whole body moving. Start by jogging two times around the court. You should be going slow and steady. Now move back to the baseline and jog up to the net and back pedal back. Do this for five times and back. From the baseline, switch to sidestepping to each side of the doubles line and try to keep an upright posture. Do this five times again and then switch to some light karaoke steps. Try to move your upper body in the opposite direction as your hips and legs. A light cardio warming up the body is something Djokovic makes sure to do before he works out, practices, or plays a match in order to reduce his risk of injury as much as possible. After Djokovic's finished his light warm-up and maybe broken a little sweat, he'll begin a series of dynamic stretches. I think it's safe to say that all modern professionals will include a dynamic stretching routine in their warm-up. Dynamic stretching is like regular stretching, except instead of holding your muscles in a stretched position, you're taking it through a range of motion. And it's effective for three reasons. The first reason is that dynamic stretching movements like leg swings simulate the movements and forces that you experience when you're hitting your strokes and moving around the court. Second, in most dynamic stretching movements, you have to exert force which warms up the body and gets the blood and temperature flowing to your muscles. Lastly, dynamic stretching stimulates the nervous system and improves your muscle reaction times. On the other hand, according to numerous scientific studies, traditional stretching, where you hold the stretch for 20 to 30 seconds, provided no benefit to the player's performance. In fact, if you're holding your muscles for more than 30 seconds, you might actually be temporarily weakening them. If you want to learn more about this subject, I'll link to a great article I found on matspoint.com. In his book, Djokovic recommends you do 10 to 20 reps of each of these nine exercises, depending on your fitness level. Do these nine exercises consecutively without any rest if you can. That said, all these exercises combined should take you no longer than five minutes to go through. Start out with jumping jacks. These are great because you're warming up your legs, shoulders, and core. Number two is the walking high knees. Stand with your feet shoulder width apart. Now bend your left knee up as high as you can without losing good posture. After you reach the highest point, step forward and switch to the other leg. The next one is the walking high kicks. Stand again shoulder width apart, but this time kick your left leg up in front of your body. Try to go as high as possible without bending your legs. As you kick your right leg up, reach out with your opposite side hand and try to touch your toes. After touching, step forward and switch to the other side. The fourth exercise are burpees. Stand shoulder width apart. Now squat down as low as you can and simultaneously lean your upper body forward until your hands are at the ground. From this position, push off your legs and straighten them out until you're in a push-up position. Right when your feet touch the ground, bounce your legs back up and stand back up. To make this slightly more advanced, I like to add a push-up. Also, if you're into yoga like Djokovic is, you might be familiar with the downward dog position. Adding these movements are great for stimulating your upper body. Lunge with side bend. Starting shoulder width apart, step forward with your left leg into a lunge. Your left knee should be bent about 90 degrees and your other leg should be relatively straight. As you lunge, take your right arm and reach over your head to the other side. You should feel a stretch in your side abdomen. From this full stretch position, push your leg to stand back up and switch to the other side. Next, the reverse lunge with backward reach. 
start shoulder width apart and lunge forward again. But this time, instead of reaching sideways, raise both of your arms above your head. From here, reach back behind you to the left. From the full stretch, return to standing back up and switch to the other side. The seventh exercise is called the low side to side lunge. Start two shoulder widths apart this time and hold your hands together in front of your body. Shift your body to the left. Your left leg should stay straight as your right knee bends. Keep going down until your hips are at least parallel with the ground. Make sure to keep an upright posture with your right foot flat on the ground. Your left toes can come up depending on how low you go. Number eight is the inverted hamstring. Stand on your left leg with your knee slightly bent to protect your ligaments. Your arms should be at your sides. Raise your right leg back behind you. Your right leg and your torso should remain completely straight. Now bend at your hips until your body is parallel to the ground. As you raise your leg back, raise your arms to the sides with your palms facing down. From this position, stand back up and switch to the other leg. You should feel a stretch in your hamstring and you're also stimulating the nervous system. The last exercise is the inchworm. Stand shoulder width apart and bend over to put your hands down about shoulder width apart. Djokovic recommends that you keep your legs straight, but if you have knee pain, it might be good to bend softly at the knees. With your hands on the ground, walk forward with your hands as far as you can without bending your back or knees. Pause for a second and walk up forward with your feet until you're back into the bent over position. Now repeat this movement 10 to 20 times. This works on your core, arms, and legs while stretching out the backside of your body. The last phase of Djokovic's warm-up includes a series of ballistic movements specifically done with the resistance band. If you don't have one, I highly recommend you get one. Djokovic usually has his personal trainer holding the band for him, but even if you're alone, you can tie it around the top of the net. Start by facing the net with the band straight and your arms straight out. Now with your hands facing back, pull the band down with one of your arms. When you reach your side, go back up and alternate with your other arm. Next is the row with rotation. Put your band straight in front of you again, except this time, pull straight back with one side. As you pull, allow your upper body to rotate with your hips preferably staying stable. Alternate about 10 times. Next, move on to back flies. From your starting position, pull both arms out like you're trying to fly. This may be hard for you if you haven't worked on your back muscles, but try to keep an upright posture without sticking your head forward. Next is the horizontal external shoulder rotation. This next one works on the external rotator cuff muscles located in your shoulders. With both arms, bend at your side, raise them until they're slightly lower than 90 degrees. From this position, try to pull the band back without moving your upper arm. This is another exercise that might be hard for you if you neglect your back muscles. If you feel the burn in your back shoulder, loosen the resistance. The muscle you're working on is weak and can easily be injured if you're trying to push it. The next is shoulder flexion. Face away from the net this time with your arms at your sides and slightly bent. Your palms should also be away from the net. From here, pull the band forward with both arms for a few inches. You should feel it in your chest and front shoulder. Next is the tricep extension. Now take your arms up above your head with your arms bent. From here, pull the band by extending your arm. You want minimal movement with your body besides your arms straightening because you're trying to target the tricep muscles here. Next is the chest press. From this position, take a small step forward with your dominant leg so that you can lean forward slightly. But make sure your core is engaged and your back and neck are straight. Raise your arms out to your side and bend them at a 90 degree angle. From here, push forward with your chest like you're doing a push-up. Now we're gonna work on your internal shoulder rotator cuff. Turn your body to the left until it's sideways to the neck. Now bend your right arm at a 90 degree angle while your other arm holds the band stable. From here, pull the band toward your chest with your right arm without moving your upper arm. Here you're warming up your internal shoulder rotator muscle. You might feel a slight burn somewhere inside of your shoulder. Now switch to the external shoulder rotator cuff. Without changing your body's position, bend your left arm 90 degrees and tuck it to your chest. From here, pull the band just like you did before, except away from your chest. This will work on your external shoulder rotator muscle. But be extra careful with this exercise because your external shoulder rotator muscle is weak and can easily be injured. The last exercise of your warm-up is the wood chopper. Clasp your hands in front of your chest holding the band with both arms completely straight. Try to keep an upright posture. From here, pull the band away from the net 
by twisting your trunk, but try not to let your hips move. After you're done with this side, do the last three exercises on the other side and you'll be ready to pick up your racket. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. To take these exercises onto the court right away, click the link in the description below and download our free checklist. If you like this fitness video series, be sure to leave a like. Until next time, go out and train hard. See you in the next video. Ha ha ha!